there's nothing Hundley loved more than a clean lobby. He only wished that monkey felt the same way. Oh, sorry about that, Hundley. Is that all of it? It's not even half of it. Ah, 301's doorbell is stuck again. Don't worry, Hundley will show you to the basement. Great. George, I'll go upstairs for more boxes. Why don't you and Hundley find a spot for them? Hundley decided to find a place for Georgia's stuff. <laughs> it occurred to Hundley that this was the first time he'd been in the basement by himself. Now where did that ball go? A good lobby dog is fearless. George was right. You should save everything, because you never know when you might need it. <laughs> to help pinpoint the noise, George divided the basement into four sections. He recorded the creepy noise in each of the four sections. George played the recording and listened closely. <laughs> now they knew the noise was coming from the part of the basement near the boxes. No, 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 after you. <gasps> Hundley had enough. He was tired of being afraid. This is a cow. <laughs> Cow. <laughs> yeah, Mo. Aw, Hundley must be the bravest dog in the city. Woo! Woo! Well, let's get the rest of those boxes down here. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you learned noises are nothing to be afraid of? <gasps> you don't shed the. Maybe we should keep your stuff upstairs, George. You never know when we might need it. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, help! Attention! Attention! Help! How'd you enjoy the show, George? Aren't all the different breeds fascinating?
Uh-huh. Would you like to see the winners up close? Oh. <laughs> George got a big surprise. Because when he actually looked at the big ones, and the small ones, and the crazily hairy ones, he thought the dog show was great. Have you ever seen so many unforgettable dogs before? Okay. Well, it looks like you had fun. I hope he wasn't too much trouble. He was no trouble at all. Wow, that's great to hear. Gotta run. See you tomorrow. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. So, you like the dog show, huh? <laughs> George wanted to tell the man about all the unforgettable dogs he saw. <laughs> but he only remembered three. It's okay, you can tell me later. Oh, would you do me a big favor and mail these letters? I made a sandwich if you're hungry. And when I'm done, I want to hear about all the dogs. George was afraid he wouldn't be able to tell the man more because no matter how hard he tried, he could only remember three. There was only one solution. <laughs> but no matter how many times George looked at those dogs, he couldn't remember more than three. Oh. There was obviously no way a monkey could remember them all. Attention. Uh, could I see the owners of the winners over here, please? Briskly. Briskly, briskly, briskly. Three big, three small, and three hairy dogs. George, I'm home. Oh, Hunley, <laughs> what are you doing here? in here. <laughs> George remembered all the dogs. So, where did these three and three and three nine dogs come from? <laughs> I'm just so happy they're all back and all safe. Well, everyone's back where they belong. <laughs> huh? Hundley! <laughs> uh, stop the car! Hey! Hundley's in there! Come back! Natural Geometric Exploring presents Pirates of the Wybicas! Wow, how 
how'd you like to sail a ship like that, Hundley? <laughs> now there was a ship that couldn't be sunk by monkey breath. The SS Wybicas was attacked by the bold pirate Black Hat Besame. Ah. Pirate vessel off the port bow. All hands to your stations. Whole wind, coxswain. Oh. Oh. Those ships were so dignified and neat. Wouldn't it be great to be an old-time captain? <laughs> the neatest ship to ever set sail was the SS Dignified. Its commander was world-renowned, Captain Hundley. No other captain was as smart, as orderly, or had as wet a nose. All's clear, Captain Hundley, sir. Thank you, sir. You know how much your approval means to me, sir. <laughs> Captain Hundley's crew was always orderly and efficient. knew how to ride the breezes like Captain Hundley, the greatest sailor in the history of wind. But all was not smooth sailing. The wind was so strong, the pirates were upon the dignified before Captain Hundley could give orders. The pirates were led by... Yellow Hat the Pirate. He's famous, you know. Hi, how are you? We're uh, taking over your ship because, uh, well, you know, that's, that's what pirates do. But the most undignified thing wasn't putting Captain Hundley in his own brig. It was this. Who are you? <laughs> I like you already. Come on out and have fun with us. George wanted to hang it up where Captain Hundley could enjoy it. George got an idea about how he could really help Captain Hundley. Are you down here? Oh, my goodness. I mean, R. Wake up. Uh, put on life vests. We're, we're filling with water, sinking. We, it, we gotta get back to our own ship. <laughs> Captain Hundley used the wind perfectly, and they set sail. George! George! <laughs> hey, that, that sounds fun, doesn't it, George? <laughs> Say, Hunley, your good pal George is going to come out on the boat with us today. <laughs> At least Hunley knew what to expect, so he was prepared. <laughs> hey, George, perfect kite flying weather, huh? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> careful. I lose control. Flying a kite's all about control. <laughs> Sorry, I can't turn over control to an inexperienced city kid. <laughs> this isn't as easy as I make it. Look, I studied the Beaufort wind scale for three years. <laughs> I never make mistakes. <laughs> oh! Oh! 
so 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 Rats! That's never coming down! For a city kid, you sure can't climb a tree! <laughs> Not a scratch! Thanks, George! As a reward, I'll let you fly her. <laughs> Bill! Billy! Coming! I promised I'd help Mom gut a pumpkin. I won't be long. <laughs> you watch the kite till I get back. George figured he could watch the kite even better while it flew. George was really flying that kite now. Or maybe it was flying him. without saying goodbye, city folk. who never flew a kite before. Got her up higher than I ever did. <gasps> Whoa! Well, hi, Bill. You own binoculars? Sure do. What's trailing behind that kite? Oh, it's George. It's George? And he's got a squirrel on his head. Bill, you call the fire department. Okay. Why? I don't know. They seem to know how to do everything. What are you going to do? I'm going up there after him. George? Huh? George! It was his friend, the man with the yellow hang glider. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, hang on tight. <laughs> We're going home. George would never forget the day he was almost a bird. And he added almost being a bird to the list of things squirrels don't like. You're a natural kite flyer, kid. Good work. Lunch is ready. Here's some lunch for you too, Jumpy. <laughs> Bedtime in the city, when all little monkeys like to hear a good story. Of all the bedtime stories, Double O Doggy was George's favorite. It's a super spy's job to discover secrets, and Double O Doggy is the best. He has lots of tools to help him. Oh, that's a periscope, remember? 
Well, inside the tube are two mirrors. The mirror at this end reflects whatever it's pointing at to a mirror at this end. That way, Double O Doggy can see things without being seen himself. <laughs> All right. Good night, little spy monkey. <laughs> the next day, George started practicing to be a super spy, like Double O Doggy. George, if you have any paper to recycle, put it in this bin, okay? Um, George? <laughs> a super spy needed a spy name. George became... Ah. Double O Monkey. Ooh. Professor Wiseman, I was wondering... Can we meet an hour later? A super spy had to be smart, quiet, and quick with his hands and feet. There's this thing I want to get for George. He is going to love it. <gasps> Sometimes super spies had to go undercover. Oh, great. See you then. He'd only been a super spy for two minutes, and Double O Monkey already had his first spy mission. Find out what the man with the yellow hat was going to get him. <laughs> it took a while to get the angle of the periscope just right. gonna need something to hold it all together. <laughs> At last, Double O Monkey had his spy periscope. <laughs> and not a moment too soon. Except maybe Charky. his eye on the man with the yellow hat now. You know, it, it's not nice to spy on people. <laughs> and it can ruin surprises like this. <gasps> now, do you want an official double-O doggy periscope, or would you rather just make another one? <laughs> you want both? You're a super spy monkey. You need lots of ways to keep your eyes on things. Most mornings, George went out on the porch to find the paper. Ooh. This morning, the paper found George. Sorry! George wished he could be a paper boy someday but he didn't even know how to ride a bike. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> this? Oh, why, this was my bike when I was a boy. I sure had fun. But it was a long time ago. George liked knowing the man with the yellow hat was holding him up. By the third day, <laughs> oh. he rode so fast, the man with the yellow hat couldn't keep up. <laughs> Very good, George. I think you're ready to ride on the road. <laughs> now remember, always watch where you're going, stay on the right side of the road, and signal turns, like this for left, and this for right. <laughs> That's it. Oh, and be a good little monkey cyclist. Bye-bye. so fast, but I'm going to be late for school. Hey, could you finish my paper route? <laughs> <laughs> Trusted with a paper route, it was like George's wish had just been granted. Every house on the road gets a paper, including the houses across the stream. Uh -huh. Yes, George had become just like a real paper boy. Nothing would stop him from completing his route. Last time they came to the stream, the man with the yellow hat made paper boats. George thought he remembered how. His boat was so good, George decided to make a whole fleet. be a paper boy. <laughs> That's an important job. <laughs> Looks like you've delivered them all but one. Another day's hard work almost done, eh? <gasps> George couldn't wait for his newspapers to be sun-dried. George had promised Bill he'd deliver all these papers. If it didn't get done, Bill could lose his job. Uh Maybe the man with the yellow hat knew where to get dry papers. Hey, hold on, George. How about we just buy a few dry papers and deliver them right now? And so, George was able to finish his route just like a real paper boy. Maybe I should buy a new bike for myself, too. <laughs> Sorry. Ta-da! George wondered, who were these incredible fruit balancers? Zucchinis! <laughs> Piscetti! Giorgio, these are my friends, the famous zucchinis. <laughs> we can buy to order food for our rehearsal. Our show is tonight. But now, all he wanted was to be an amazing balancing zucchini. 
You want to deliver this to the zucchinis for me? Aha. Maybe you like to see them again because you want to be a zucchini, eh? Uh huh. Ah. That which gives us the strength to perform our amazing feats! <laughs> I think he wants to join us. <laughs> it's not that easy. It takes lots of practice to do things like us. Balance requires total control. I never sneeze unless uh, a cat. Leo's allergic to cat hair, and sneezing is very bad for his balance. It would wreck our show. George was proud to be a starter zucchini. He gave out every flyer. And that night, everyone he knew came to the show. Everyone. Gnocchi just wanted to watch. She found a quiet place where she couldn't possibly bother anyone. Okay, just relax, Chef. We'll do everything. This is like a dream come true. Gnocchi ran to Chef Biscetti whenever she saw him. So why should now be any different? Is that a, uh, uh... Oh, it's Gnocchi. Leo, don't sneeze. I, I can't, can't, can't help it. <laughs> Gnocchi, go with your show. <laughs> this was just like that mop. So George shifted his hands. George was all day, practicing to be in the show. <gasps> we made it! <laughs> After a sneeze break, the show went on and was a great success. And when it was over, because of their great balance, we voted to make George and Chef Piscetti official zucchinis. Oh! <laughs> and you're welcome to practice with us anytime. So that was all real? Oh, I'm glad I didn't know. I, I would have worried. Ah, uh, nothing to worry about. George is a natural. <laughs> 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 But maybe he should stick to the high wire. If one car was fun, imagine what you could do with two. George had to show his great new car shoes to someone. George couldn't wait to see the look on Hunley's face. <laughs> that wasn't the look he expected. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Hunley didn't want monkey handprints all over the clean doors. <laughs> George didn't know how to turn around and go back. I don't know. We have too many roller skates. Now, what can we do to make people more interested in skates? Well, how about having a roller skating monkey give demonstrations? And just where are we going to find a roller skating monkey? The skates are our gift to you. You just skate in front of the store whenever you can. <laughs> George liked his new skates. But what were these black things for? <laughs> George thought that even Hunley would have to admire his skates, especially since now he knew how to stop. on wheels looked wrong, but a proud, sleek dachshund on nice wheels. George knew exactly what Hunley wanted to do. kept going faster and faster. <laughs> he couldn't imagine how they were ever going to stop. <laughs> then he could. <laughs> Hanley, I've been worried. Where have you... You are a muddy mess. Ooh. Looks like he's not the only one. We can't have the tenants see us like this, Hundley. I'll get a towel and get you cleaned up, boy. Time for you to clean up too, George. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. George? Hunley was sure if that monkey and cat hadn't been around, he could have learned to skate. Say, weren't there two pairs of skates? Must have been my imagination. Hmm. 